This episode is in partnership with Authority Magazine. Authority Magazine, a medium publication, is devoted to sharing in-depth and interesting interviews featuring people who are authorities in business, pop culture, wellness, social impact, and tech. So here we are in the dead of winter, and we're all starting to feel a little bit blah, and I've got a cold, and we're down in the dumps. And that is where today's guest is going to assist. His name is Dalton Brown, although many refer to him as the fitness trainer to the stars. And we're going to talk about all those stars in a moment and how staying fit can assist people, even regular folks like me, remain balanced, healthy, and happy. Hey, Dalton, welcome to Believe in People. Thanks for having me, Kevin and Amy. Um, you know, we, we sort of bill ourselves as a podcast for people with hope. Um, what kinds of different kinds of hope are there? No, I always say there are three different kind of hopes. Those who have no hope, <laughs> those who have false hope, and those who have true hope. Huh. And then we always got to say there is, however, hope is an optimistic, you know, point of view where, you know, it have it always comes out on the other end, at the end of the day, where we give them the breakdown and said, okay, this is your <laughs> result. We are going with those. We are going to end up with the true hope in the long oh. run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. But okay, Don, where did your hope? Okay, so we're, you're a young, young, young boy. Okay, where did your yes. hope come from? Did you was it learned, trained, what? I think my hope was partly trained, and you learn of obvious as we go along that you know you could be somewhere in the no or the false or the true hope, and uh, over those time, you know you learn that um, the true hope is where you would like to be in the future. And you have to start somewhere. And uh, my embrace and aim at the true hope. And with that true hope, that's what, that's what bring me to this point where I'm at today. Where did you start out? Oh, I started out, uh, yes, some would say as an athlete. Yes, you know, I mean, uh, we are into what if it's track and field, soccer, and uh, and by doing that, you know, you just over time you discover what's your true passion, and with that true passion, then you start to transform that true passion into that hope that at some point you gotta come to a decision of what do you wanna get out of it in the end? Because I mean, of course, obviously, a lot of people may start out. I want to be a professional athlete. It may may not work, but you got to be realistic and then start separating some of those hopes. And not to crush, yes, I know sometimes, you know, it's nice that everyone get a ribbon at the end of the day, but in the same, in the same break, you got to be realistic about it and um, know that everyone is not going to have the same level of hope and Oh, do you really change that? Especially in children, you know, and uh, adolescent youngsters coming up, you know, and it's to instill sometime that, you know, yes, you know, you can do, Johnny can do as well as, you know, Tom over there, but, you know, you got to be still realistic with them and not give them a false hope. You know, by just letting them understand that, yes, even if you didn't win, you did well because it's about giving it your best, giving it your all. And when I give your best and your all, that to me is satisfying. Yeah, for sure. And so I just want to let the um, the viewers and our listeners know, Dalton, that you're, you began training as a, um, uh, a, a as a boxer, right? And then, uh, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. And then you uh, were motivated to compete in international bodybuilding competitions. And then that's where you kind of got into your strength and conditioning exercises that motivated you to get into training. Is that how it kind of played out? Fairly similar. Yes. Some, yeah. I mean, been in boxing, I mean, to be honest with you, I've suffered some injuries like, you know, 
broken jawbone and you know broken nose was like a given you know that will happen you know it's a contact sport but you know broken jawbone was the one that really just set me back for a while and forced me into the position of I need to still be in the gym you know just um lifting some weights still maintain some form of strength training and over that time I mean I developed such passion for it that changed my whole life in ways I would not even imagine. So with a passion comes me start sharing that passion with others who was in the gym around me, some of my peers. And with that, it brings us to this point where I'm at today. So was there a point in which you, a little light bulb went off and you said, you know, hey, I can, I can assist other people. I can teach them how to do this. Yes, that happened. And the funny thing how that happens, I was working out with a friend who actually, he was the first one who actually invited me to the gym. And um, he was more, I would say he was more experienced than I am. And by we showing up on training together, you know, he started to, you know, do some of his things I was doing and find out that he was getting benefits from it. And to my amazement, it was that uh, when I see how it was benefiting him as well as myself, when I saw that, then I, I know that this was my, my one of my calling to you know help give hope to folks who comes in and have none. Because it, I mean, money, as you know, the gym can be a place where it can be intimidating somewhat, and folks can come in and they are in. They are in a different world where you see big guys and uh, folks who are in phenomenal shape sometimes, and you feel like you are out of place. So mm-hmm. I, I, li- I like to feel like I'm that gap, I'm that bridge between the two. So when folks walk in, they feel like, you know, the way I approach them or the way they approach me by the, my welcoming to them, they feel confident. They feel like they are at home somewhat. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then Dalton, I mean, I, I want to share with the, uh, our viewers and listeners that, um, I'm going to break a little here, but you've been known as kind of the trainer to the stars. So you've trained Madonna, Pink, Carrie Underwood, Queen Latifah, Eddie McClintock, Mia Kirshner, who's uh, K- Mia Kunis. Okay. So, but you're yeah. also, uh, your other clients call you a miracle worker. Okay. What's your secret? We want to know. Oh, I mean, the miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, yes. I mean, I would say, I mean, the miracle worker and part of it is just, you know, I mean, I love to, to approach it in, in, a, in a sense where you have to get into, you have to somewhat put yourself in their place when they, they are struggling with, Maybe it's 10 pounds they're trying to lose. Maybe it's 20 pounds. Or maybe they are trying to gain some, uh, you know, muscle mass and stuff like that. And, you know, the one size fit all, does, it does not work. It's unrealistic goal to set. So I always try to find out their, you know, their background, whether if it's something that they struggle with. You know, or if it's something, whether if it's it, maybe they like to have a little extra drink or, you know, they're sweet too. And with that, you know, we try to also not telling them that they can't and they should absolutely cut it out. It's just, you know, be mindful. And with that being mindful, it's also that there must always be a balance. If there's no balance in what you are doing, when they come to see me, then we already fail if we can convince them that there should be a balance. So mm-hmm. it's about really getting into their, like one would say, getting into their head. <laughs> Somewhat. Well, isn't it funny though, right? when you talk them. about a balance, uh, balance is, is what everything is about. You have to have balance in your home life. You have to have balance in your professional life. You have to have balance in what you eat, how much you drink or what have you. If you are a, um, you know, if you're a big star, like someone like Madonna or Carrie Underwood, and I'm sure sure you're not allowed to tell us uh, 
no what you, <laughs> what you did with them yeah in, in the gym but come on, on no hand, one's listening come on come on <laughs> on the other hand you i think you are obliged to share a couple of secrets no <laughs> um they're about to go out on the road they're about to go in on a tour there it's going to be yes. grueling it's going to be you know 50 cities in 60 days or what have you i don't know how they do it because i'm not a rock star but it's imperative that they don't get sick or they don't get burned out. I'm assuming you I'm assuming this balancing act that you are teaching them keeps them, they have the stamina to continue. Absolutely. And with that, that's where we always point them into the direction of proper nutrition and to let them really just embrace the idea that you know, what they are doing and what they are, like, as I mentioned earlier, what they are about to to do in terms of touring and all that. If their nutrition is not balanced, they are they are breaking down their their whole body, you know, I mean, the whole system, the, the immune won't sustain by them just eating regularly like the regular folks do. We just got to be realistic. You know what I mean? Of course, yes, there is always going to be some secrets there where, you know, that one size fit all come back around to, to us where they will they are willing to go the extra mile to get the extra, whether if it's extra supplementing in their vitamin, mineral intake and, you know, the best type of fruit and water intake. So it's that balancing hack again where it's got to be completely fit into that individual schedule as well. And they're also willing to sacrifice to make it, you know, fit in and work for them. And actually, okay, so that to that point, and, and if you're listening to this podcast, I super encourage you to watch it on YouTube because behind Dalton is a very – um, fit, super fit body. And that's Dalton's. He has his image and he has also a message behind it that you're going to, I'm really fascinated about your mindset because on these dreary, dark, cold days, if you're in, in that, um, environment, it is really hard to psych yourself into doing anything alone, you know, get out of bed. So how do you train your mindset to just do it anyways? That train of the mindset comes in where, for me, I I normally start with meditation, meditating because I believe you know getting to that meditation meditative mode on a daily basis goes a long way, and um, then from going from there, if they still have issues with just getting their energy right, then the next step would be like just doing. A lot of us get into the cold plunge these days are just regular cold shower every day and 99.9 of the time that one seemed to with a, a combination of the meditation and the cold shower cold plunge those come together seem to always get the job done huh. and that's definitely a game changer really? yeah okay, so um here you are training uh you know teaching madonna how to stay young or whatever you do, uh, teaching Carrie Underwood how to sing country and stay alive. Um, <laughs> how come Keith Richards is still alive? I don't, how did, he doesn't really, uh, does it, does Keith Richards come to you? Not yet, but <laughs> I expect him to show up soon. <laughs> But but really, if you think about it, um, Dalton, okay, so in order to believe in people, and this is our podcast, Believe in People, and you need to believe in yourself. So why is it um, that we really struggle, and I don't know if it's a self-discipline thing, but struggle with bettering ourselves, our physiques, our bodies, feeling better, energized? What is it that holds us back? I think the thing is we always – as trainers sometimes say that if you could, you know, package discipline, then it would be out of stock at all times. However, on the other hand, that discipline is also a part of our mindset. And, um, you know, putting yourself around, it's a combination of the mindset and also to around folks 
who are like-minded because that like-minded personality goes a long way. And then that's where when clients come to see us, it's really our job to point them in a direction of, you know, for instance, you know, like we're talking about, we joke about the, the cold plunge and the cold show and all that stuff. But you know what I mean? I've seen folks who been standing over to get into the, to doing the cold plunge for like 15 minutes and just, they were back and forth thinking about, do I want to do this? But that to me, that's a part of that mindset that I was getting them to get into eventually. I, of course, I can't call a person name, but that person right now is doing it on their own seven days a week. They can't go without it, even the last time we spoke, you know, which was uh, maybe yesterday, actually. And it's just, we, are, we were video call, we were video, we are, on, we are on FaceTime, actually. And, you know, I'm not going to say ERC, but the person was in the in the in the tub with a lot of ice and not only that it was filled with ice but also the temperature of outside too was just like it was brutal and we're the, and they're having a conversation for uh three minutes and 45 seconds pretty much i timer okay i gotta stop but anyways <laughs> three minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> And I thought, I thought at the time that to me that's amazing because I remember the first time that person did the cold plunge in my presence. It lasted as much as step in and step out on the other side. Wow! <laughs> you know, uh, well, Dalton, I actually have yes. a, here in Chicago. I actually have a good friend that uh, does a once a week plunge in Lake Michigan in the winter uh, on Sunday afternoons or in the morning. Yes. So. Uh, and she, um, she says that it's great, and and I Same guess thing. it's what's that? I'm saying it's amazing. It's beyond great <laughs> if it's all beyond that point. <laughs> well, maybe I should. Maybe I. But should I love it. That. I love it. I love it. And and to be honest with you, Kev and Amy, I would say to also, you know, the percentage of clients that I've worked with that have been doing it. I would say pretty much it's at least 90% of them that are doing it. And I do a, a lot of online, you know, training as well that have, you know, we will regularly have conversation. And I've seen them, you know, doing it. And sometimes uh, the thing is that I find was w to help them make that transition anyways, was by us having conversation. It makes such a difference because if they would normally do 15 seconds or 30 seconds, by us having a conversation, they go through a minute, two minutes, without uh -huh. even noticing. Uh -huh. So, no. For me, to be honest with you, having the conversation is not just about the conversation. But that was my way of just distracting them from what they were feeling. And by me distracting them from what they are feeling, they don't notice it. And then at the end of it, I can, I'll say, okay, wow, that was three minutes. And sometimes they are, even though they have their phone set up, they are like, I'm amazed. I can't believe it. I did, just did three minutes. I don't believe it all the time. And then we're just looking at the time. And we, we laugh about it. So, I mean, you are, as a trainer, you always say you have to have different method. And again, that same, that same size doesn't fit all, but, in some cases, coal is coal. And again, for me, it's my job to let them get through it without feeling as much pain and getting over their fear as well. Uh, apart yeah. from cold plunge and showers, what's one thing um, that you would recommend somebody doing when they just don't feel like starting? One thing... Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you this experience, and it's it was it was an experience that um I did not expect to make such an impact on that client life. They wanted to work out daily, and they were struggling with the with the idea of just getting up and getting in the gym and like 
I could not convince them about the cold plunge, but I was able to get in their head about the meditated meditation, and we got into that. And then we were having a conversation. A conversation. I said, "What was it that you like to do, or that you have fun doing?" And she said to me that um, I she used to swim pretty much every day. I said, "Okay, cool, that's amazing." And she said, "Really, that's amazing." I said, "Yes." And I said, "Okay, come back and see me tomorrow at such and such a time." And she came back and she saw me and. Of course, we have a swimming pool. So I said, this is what we're going to do. And we swim for five minutes that day. She was fine with that. She came back the next day. Instead of waiting, taking a day off, she called me up and said, okay, I want to come back tomorrow. She came back the next day and she swam for 30 minutes. And from there, we developed uh, a program that we started doing in the swimming pool that the benefit, it have transformed her physically, mentally, emotionally, just change your physique in, in every way possible. So that was something I've always encouraged folks and said, you know, to me anyways, even for myself, swimming, it's underrated, but in my opinion, it's one of the best exercise that anyone could ever, you know, get into. Swimming is number one, in my opinion. Oh. And for me, you know, with all my weight training and my contact sport, whether if I'm sparring or whatever, I also embrace swimming as, to me, it's a key factor because it's, it changes and impact every muscle group in our body. So mm-hmm. when folks have issue with lifting weights and doing some of the other stuff that I would encourage them to do, and I point them into the direction of swimming, it always does the the, the 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 job but are you originally from the caribbean yes original so, from the caribbean so obviously and now you're in toronto somewhere yes so right you, in you, toronto <laughs> you had to learn how to deal with the cold on your own anyway you you've succeeded absolutely quite well. <laughs> absolutely kevin and i mean <laughs> Coming out of the Caribbean, specifically Jamaica, you know, and coming to Canada as a teenager, I had to learn ways to deal with the cold. And to be honest with you, I think for me anyways, doing the cold shower and the cold plunge and all those things, to me, it put me in a place where I did not dread the winter the way I used to in my, probably my first 10 years living in, in, in Canada. So getting into the, 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 the cold shower, the cold plunge on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day, it just made me go through the winter. I don't have to wear a heavy jacket. And to be honest, I guess I get sick way less than I used to anyways. Like, I mean, with just typical cold and flu symptoms. Okay. So it, it changes a lot of things. Why do you believe in people? For, for me, the reason why I believe in people, I believe in people because I, I believe that everyone does have that, um, that right to be happy about themselves and what they are and how they, you know, see them like their life. And by, by going that path, you know, it helped me to bring more happiness and more joy and share that to people. Thank you so much, Dalton. And Dalton, you're, Dalton is, uh, he's on Instagram. If you want to see his nutrition, what he eats, check him out. Dalton, what's your handle on Instagram and your, um, and where they can uh, reach you? Dalton underscore gym dot com. So it's Dalton underscore, Dalton, sorry, Dalton underscore grown underscore gym. Sorry. Stand corrected. So, I'll post and, that. Um, yeah. So pretty much, I mean, once you go there, all of our infos are there. And uh, you can reach me and contact me. And uh, we answer all your questions and help you to accomplish your fitness goals and dream as well and bring some happiness to your life. Thank you so much.
And um, I'm sure you'll be getting a call from Keith Richards any moment now. <laughs> Absolutely. I look forward to that. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Amy, for having me. And um, hope we can do this again. Thanks, Dalton. Well, Dalton had gave me uh, quite a few things to think about, and I'm I uh, I think I'm I've dabbled in taking the plunge into the cold, uh, uh -huh. but I think I'm a little more uh, less fearful, a little more energetic to do this now that he kind of inspired me. So that's my one thing. That's the one thing that I'm going to do just to to make winter less cold and dreary. I'm going to do it to myself, make me I happier. Mean, I mean, everything he talked about is about maintaining a balance. Yeah. And um, and setting a goal and doing your best. What a great conversation. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll go take a cold plunge myself. Or, as they say, go jump in the lake. <laughs> if you've liked this episode, please subscribe to our podcast, Believe in People. We are everywhere. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amy.